Greetings ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to map making tutorials. This is part three and we're going to start working on our lobby today. This is your host Sliced Lime. We have gone through in the first two parts how to set up your spawn area and the clocks that you will need to run your game and now it's time to start using those clocks. As I've mentioned before every time I build a lobby I learn more things about building a lobby. So let's go over to our lobby real quick. This is where we are going to build our lobby. Now exactly what you put here is entirely up to you. We're going to do something extremely simple here just to make something it's going to be ugly as heck. <laughs> Let's build with snow because why not. So depending on what kind of functionality you want in your lobby you'll want to make it a certain size. Uh, in general, you want to have space for your players and you might want certain controls for the players to operate. That could be related to settings of the map, that could be related to joining a team or any other thing like that. The important thing is players are going to move about here and you want them to be able to see the controls even if there are other players in the way already. So provide a bit of space for that. So what is there to learn about making lobbies? Well. You would normally make a lobby and you'd think, hey, players are going to stand here and wait. And players do not stand here and wait. The first thing your players are going to do is they're going to run around and they're going to try to escape the place. So what you want to be doing is you want to be building up walls around this place. It doesn't matter if it's like a real wall or if there's a barrier block or whatever there is. You want some kind of confinement so the players don't run away from your thing. Lobby is a place for waiting, but players don't really like waiting. Expect your players to be very impatient. So what you can try to do is provide some form of amusement. Build Off Parkour did this pretty successfully by providing a little parkour thing that challenged players while they were in the lobby. So that was pretty successful. If you can find something that fits into the theme of your map, then all the better. So here's a decision you'll have to make. Either you don't want players to see what the rest of your map looks like, and in that case you can build up walls using actual solid opaque blocks. Otherwise you can build up walls of glass or you can give yourself a barrier block. And those of course, hello, there we go, can be used to build up walls that can't be seen and that can't be traversed. Now normally you would think that two blocks high is enough, but if somebody manages to take damage in your lobby then it won't be enough. So you might want to make your walls higher. Also remember if you're building your walls out of opaque blocks, you don't want the players to see the rest of your map, remember that they can jump and then spot stuff over the top of your walls. And also F5 mode can give them a completely different camera angle so they will see a lot more of your map. Uh, of course it doesn't matter if you have barriers like this. All right, now we have built up a completely unsurmountable barrier around our lobby here. So what is the next thing the players are going to do? Well, the next thing the players are going to do is try to break out. Now, they can't break through the barrier, but they're definitely going to try to break through the floor. The first time I built a lobby without protection like that, it was completely and utterly wrecked to the point where people were spawn looping. They would spawn in midair, fall to their death <laughs> and spawn again. Still brought ourselves over to our command locks here and we're gonna have to do something about it. Now recall this little setup. By the way we're starting out in 1.9 today it doesn't really matter but I figured from now we'll probably be doing Minecraft 1.9 first in most cases because those are going to be the most up-to-date and the newer stuff. This also will be a lot more similar for both cases. So we have the different states, we know our state 0 is our lobby. That's this clock, and we have this block that's empty right now. So one thing we might want to do here is put everybody in game mode adventure. And we're going to do that to everybody in game mode 0. So if I now do game mode 0, so I've just played a game, I end up in the lobby, and I can't break stuff. So that is a, an effective way of doing this. The other way of doing this is to give everybody high level mining fatigue. Now, of course, as you see, I've ended up here and I have a bunch of stuff in my, my inventory and it's very, very hard to prevent that. 
the reason for that is that even if you clear the inventory of everybody at the game end, if somebody disconnected halfway through, they're still going to have their stuff saved into their inventory. And so the next thing we want to do is clear uh, at a m equals 2. And we need to set that to always active and oops chain. So now if I try again and do game mode 0, I end up at spawn and my inventory is cleared. So I can't place blocks here and I can't break my way out of this. I am now properly confined to this lobby. And that's great. That's a great next step. But of course it's not enough. So let's go back over to our command blocks. Whoops. And grab another one. Now, what do we have to do next? What is the next thing that players are going to do? Well, the very next thing the players are going to do is they are going to go punching each other. Because if they have nothing else to do, they'll go and punch each other. That's the next learning. It's one of the things that were plaguing the entrapment playtests for a very long time. So the next command that we're going to do is going to be an effect command. We're going to affect again everybody in adventure mode. And we're going to give them a Minecraft weakness. And if you give a sufficient level of weakness, they can't hit each other and cause knockback and stuff. If you have enough weakness that they are unable to damage each other, so their hits would give zero damage, then there's no knockback and no other effect. So that's what I've gone with in my maths. The other alternative here is to put players on the same team. However, the point of a lobby is often to set up teams. So you probably want to be able to set up two or more teams and still not have players be able to hit each other. And we're just going to give them a second of weakness, a hundred or something. And we're going to do true there. So if we do effect, we'll see. Effect seconds amplifier hide particles. So we have one second, a hundred times amplifier and hide the particles. What this means is that this will keep being reapplied every tick when you are in the lobby. So if I go game mode zero again, I end up over here. And if I check it, I have weakness, even though I can't see any particles or any marker up in the corner because I have hide particles set to true. Uh, but if I hit somebody now, they would not take any damage and thus would not be knocked back. Also remember that these commands in this row are only running when the state of the map is zero. And state of the map zero means lobby. So these commands are only running in lobby mode, which means that once the game is ready to start, it will just take one second for the weakness to wear off and then everybody is as they should be. So that's the point of these clocks from last time, is to be able to quickly switch out of a mode and then we don't have to care about all of these commands running anymore. So that's pretty useful. What happens next with players is something we're not going to cover right now. Instead, we're going to cover that later when we get to talking about control panels. They are going to fiddle with your map controls. And we're not going to prevent that today. There are a few other things that we need to take care of here, though. And one of those is that people will get hungry. And if people are down on health, they might have low health, too. So we're going to run a few more effects. And you can run this on everybody when the map is on lobby mode. It doesn't matter because it's not going to hurt anybody. We're going to run one that is saturation and just make sure that nobody gets hungry at all. And we can just do one, one true for a second of level one saturation. And then another one that we're going to do effect at a instant health one, one true. So if I now go game mode zero, you see. I immediately get switched into adventure mode right away. And I have weakness and you can see kind of saturation and weakness flashing here, maybe if the video is picking that up. But anyway, that's happening once in a while. So it doesn't matter now how much I jump around or if I was damaged, I can do. Uh, so even if I take. Weird, that doesn't make a sound anymore. Anyway, even if I take damage and I don't have full health, that will refill my health instantly. And even if I was hungry or even if I jump around here, it's not going to reduce me to hunger. So I will never start starving that way or having other ill effects from that. And what that means down the line is that whenever we actually start our game on our map here, 
everybody's going to have exactly the same conditions and chances to win, other than their own skill, of course. All of the characters will be at full health and full hunger. So that's that, now we have that, and then, of course, you can also do some cosmetic stuff if you want, like setting a certain time of day, or fixing the weather, or any other sort of environmental thing that you want. If you've noticed, if you join in and trap, and it's always a certain time of night when we're in the lobby, and you can either manage that here by just adding another command block that does time set and the time you want, and whether clear or whether thunder or whatever, or you can have a row of command blocks that trigger whenever you move into a certain state, which is what I did in uh, Entrapment. And I'll show you that one when we get to switching between states later on. We have a few things to go through first, but we'll get there pretty soon. Few things before we end this episode. I'm not going to repeat this for Minecraft 1.8 because the commands will be exactly the same. There's no difference whatsoever. All that you do is stick these into normal command blocks on the fill clock for the state instead of lined up like this in chain. So that's the basic of how you start setting up a lobby. Next time we're going to take a look at different ways to actually perform the tasks of a lobby, such as splitting players into teams, letting them select teams, or producing a player numbering. For instance, if you look at build off parkour, Everybody who joins gets a sequence number so that they have their turn. And that lets the game then cycle through the players and give each one their turn in order. So that lobby has to set up so that every time a new player joins, that person gets a new sequence number. And then after that, we're going to start looking at controls. How to set up control panels so that it works everywhere and for everyone. For instance, on Minecraft Realms, if you're going to submit a map there, there's some limitations that don't usually apply. So I'm going to show you some tips for how you build a map so it will work on realms and if there are other places like that too, I don't know. So that's what's coming up. If you want to take a look at this, I will include both the Minecraft 1.8 version and the Minecraft 1.9 version of this as downloads in the video description. As always, if you have any questions or comments or if you want to request where this tutorial series will go, then do so in the comment section, I read all the comments, and if you request something, we'll get to it down the line in advanced map making. So this has been Sliced Lime, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.